Today we were doing a trial on Soft Rush with Contact 2000, the weed wiper. Um, we're using a new farm chemical today, uh, which is Rattler, it's called. Uh, it's basically glyphosate based. We wiped two areas, uh, one with reasonable sized rush and the other with very tall rush, uh, totaling around three acres, three, between three and three and a half acres. Um, and we used, chemical wise, we used half a litre of chemical uh, at a diluted rate of 20 to one. Basically took the concept to contact weed control uh, and designed a machine over a number of years to combat like, soft rush and any tall vegetation. The Contact 2000 is my machine. It's selective through height, um, which means that you can then use glyphosate products in a grassland situation without actually transferring the glyphosate onto the grass. So it then makes a selective chemical, basically. Uh, Soft rush is a massive problem in the west of Scotland. In fact, the whole of Britain now, I think, is starting to get worse. The weed wiper is one way of tackling the, the problem, as of you can go and wipe uh, areas that you wouldn't necessarily want to spray, because when you're going to spray, the problem with spraying is you take out these guys here, like your clover. Now that's, farmers want to keep their clover, want to protect the understory of their grass. So by using a weed wiper, you're not putting any chemical on the grass at all. You're only putting it on the target vegetation, uh, which makes it uh, cheaper to run, much more environmentally friendly, and uh, it's, it's cost effective because it uses less chemical, as I said. You can access places that uh, you normally, like in wetland areas, for example, you can access places that you couldn't spray because of watercourses, but because you're on a weed wiper, you're only putting it on the weeds and you're not spraying it into the wind, so it's not getting drift and giving you problems like that. Uh, also, another advantage, of the, as I said, is the cost. One of the features of this machine as well is the flotation tires. Uh, which actually act as the suspension for the machine as well. Also, in this case, we've now mounted the tank directly onto the, the, the wiper, which is a relatively new concept. But the advantage of the tank being on here is the fact that you just hook it off at the drawbar and unplug your plug, and away you go to do your other job. Whereas if you're doing it with a quad bike, or if you're doing it with a buggy, and you've got the tank on the back, it can be a pain in the neck. Uh, so we find it's easier to have the tank on here. The first issue I had with the first machines was I had operator error, basically. As one guy, one of my guys would go and do a cracking job one day, and then the next day he would go and make a pig's area. How that was remedied was that's when we designed the controller. The controller is designed to work in percentages. So if you look at this weed situation we've got here, you're up about 90 odd percent because of the volume of weeds. Whereas across the other side there, the lighter bit that we did was much less. We did uh, about 60 percent across there. And then we'd up the ante when we come in here. It's a very simple setup. It's a 12 volt supply, just plugs into the electrics and whatever towing vehicle you're using. Chemical ratio is a different thing with this machine as well, the chemical itself, you've got spraying, spraying recommendations on your product label which don't apply to the weed wiper. But as a rule of thumb, uh, the chemical should be mixed at 20 to 1. 20 parts water to 1 part chemical, uh, which is what we've got in here. Today we're using a glyphosate by New Farm. You can use other, there are other chemicals that are recommended that can be used through the weed wiper as well. Now MCPA is not a particularly good chemical f through the, the weed control, the contact weed control system. Uh, you tend to get varied results with it. If I take you back to the full story of the 20 to 1. Originally, when I designed the first machine, I went to Monsanto, the chemicals company, and asked them how much chemical I should be using 
through my machine. And they couldn't tell me that because they said nobody's asked us that question before. So Monsanto being a bit forward thinking and reckoning there was mileage in it for them, they, along with myself, set up uh, trials. And we trialled loads of different chemicals. Um, not just Monsanto's chemicals, but mainly Roundup, but we used a lot of other chemicals. And after four or five years of rigorous testing, we came up with the magic number, the 20 T1, because the 20 T1 works with everything. There's nothing that doesn't work, Ray. Some guys come to me and say they can date with less or change whatever else, but as a standard recommendation, 20 T1 works for any chemical. A lot less chemical because you're only putting it on the target vegetation. You're not putting it in the ground. We covered that with the clover earlier. It's not going in the clover, it's not destroying the grass. For example, we're standing here in, what's that, three, three and a half acres, give or take. Yep. Uh, I put two litres of chemical in to do this and there'll be one litre left when I'm finished. <laughs> yep. uh, because you use much, much less. I put that amount in just to make sure I had enough to cover what we were going to do. And the reason that it's a brush, it was for, for maximum plant contact, basically. Because if you've got a flat surface, it brushes up one side. Ideally, if you can keep it dry for about four hours after treatment. This is good today because the plant is actually dry. I was a bit worried when I came out today that the plant was maybe going to be wet. And if the plant's wet, you dilute your chemical a bit further. You can still get it to work, but ideally you want a nice drying wind like this, a dry plant and dry for three stroke four hours after treatment and then we should all be good to go.